Today I'm going to show you how to build a 24 volt, 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery using 3.2 volt nominal cells and this which is a BMS. Well, let me stop you right there. There's no point in watching this video because it is cheaper to just go buy a 200 amp hour 24 volt lithium iron phosphate battery off the shelf. It's just cheaper or it's the same price and then you don't need to have all the tools, you don't need to buy the wire, you don't need to figure out how to get a case. So, so there's no need to watch this video. In fact, don't even buy a 24 volt battery. Go out and buy a 48 volt rack mounted battery like an EG4 and just save yourself some hassle. Okay, you're still here. Well, you asked for it. I'm gonna show you how to build a 24 volt lithium iron phosphate battery using eight 200 amp hour 3.2 volt cells and this. So here we go. I told you not to watch it. So first thing you're gonna need is eight 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate cells to build a 24 volt 200 amp hour battery. So the first step you gotta do is get your batteries and put them all in parallel, which means all the positives are connected and all the negatives are connected. And this is called top balancing. So you're gonna put them like that, then you're gonna charge them all up, and you're gonna let them sit, you can charge them, you're gonna let them sit, you can charge them, let them sit. Do that for a week. That'll make sure that they're all the same voltage, because that's critical, because if they're not at the same voltage, one will be high, one will be low, and they'll never be balanced, and you'll have a really weak battery. Another thing is, when you buy the battery, it's gonna come with these bus bars and these bolts. Now you're gonna have enough bolts but you're not gonna have enough bus bars to do them in parallel, so you're gonna have to either buy more bus bars or just make your own out of copper like I did here. So these have been sitting for about a week. They're nicely balanced. So now we're gonna take them apart and we're gonna flip them to put them in series. Of course, the first thing you have to do is take all of the bolts and the bus bars off, which is not particularly difficult. You can fast forward this. In fact, I'm just going to stop filming because this is pretty simple. So I have taken all of the bus bars off. You can see there's a big old pile of them here. The homemade ones we're not going to need. You can put those aside. We're just going to keep the um, store-bought ones. You will need all of the screws. So I've cleaned up the batteries a little bit. These are old batteries, probably four years old. I built a ton of batteries with them and taken them apart. So they're old and dusty because, again, nobody does this anymore. But I'm going to do this because I have these cells laying around and I want to build a 24-volt battery because I'm going to be building a massive off-grid system, which I'll be doing a video on in a second. So let's talk about the BMS. So if you've never built a battery before, this is the BMS, Battery Management System. This controls everything. This is the brains of the operation. It'll control the voltage coming in, the voltage coming out. It'll, it'll let you know if it's too hot or if it's too cold. All sorts of things you can do with this. This is actually an older one. It's a JBD BMS, which I highly recommend getting. But this is an older one. It doesn't have the Bluetooth on it. The Bluetooth is really cool. So if you get a chance, get a Bluetooth one because the Bluetooth one will let you control everything from your smartphone, which is just killer. This one did not come with wires, so I built the wires myself. Um, I would not recommend using electrical tape. You want to use a shrink wrap, but the wires are already built, so uh, I'm just going to go with it. Another thing, when you get it, it these are what they call um, the, the leads. These are going to go on each cell, which I'm going to wire up, and I'm going to show you all that, so don't worry about that. But it's going to come without these ends on it, so you will have to buy these ends and attach them. These are one quarter inch. Very simple to get them. You can get them on Amazon or anywhere you like. I also label them because when you're doing what they call an 8S, meaning that you have eight cells in series, you tend to have a lot of wires. So it's easy to get them lost and confused and you cannot wire these wrong. They have to be wired properly or you can wreck your BMS. So now back to the batteries. So like I said, I cleaned them up a little bit because they were just so incredibly filthy. And now they are, at, they are lined up in series. We're going to take those wires. We're going to put that black wire on our first negative. 
And then the first white wire is going to go on this first positive. All right, so I went ahead and I took all this horrible looking electrical tape off it and I put the actual shrink wraps on them. Uh, it's just, they just look too cheap and terrible. I just couldn't do it. So on the back of your BMS, you're going to see a letter B and C. B negative, C negative, because of course this is the black, the negative side of it. So you're going to want to take your B, the wires connected to your B, and put those on your battery. And that's what we're going to show you how to do. The C, the wires coming out of the C, these are going to be the new negative part of your battery. So just remember that. In fact, I always forget it. So I write it on the front. So I remember because I mounted these before and I forgot and I'm like, ah, did it backwards. So what I do is I just put a B and a C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the BMS on the cells. You don't have to do that. In fact, a lot of people say you don't want to transfer the heat energy from the BMS and the battery back and forth. So you can mount this somewhere else. If you're going to put it in a box, you can mount it on the box. You can put something in between them. Um, you just want to make sure that wherever you mount it, that your wires, these wires, and your leads will reach all of your cells. But it doesn't really matter where you do it. And I'm going to mount mine right here, and that's going to be perfectly fine for me. So I've mounted my BMS. See, it's all mounted. Um, I just used styrofoam to mount it, to insulate it. Um, I'm now going to put the bus bars on, but before I do that, I want to talk quickly about safety. Make sure you have some eye protection on, because if you uh, make a mistake and you short these out, uh, it could be really bad. And while I'm on that topic, use a composite ratchet if you can, because again, you know, if you short these out that way, uh, it can cause a problem. It's 3.2 volts, so it's not going to be an explosion like if it was, you know, 48 volt system. But it can wreck your battery, it can spark, it can do all sorts of bad things, so just don't do that. So now we are going to put on our bus bars. We're going to go negative to positive. You'll see a theme here pretty quickly. Positive to negative. You've probably seen what's going on. Positive to negative. positive to negative where does the next one go oh positive to negative what do you think positive to negative where could the last one possibly go oh my god positive to negative Bam, there you go. Now I'm not going to put the bolts on yet because I'm going to put the bolts on as I wire it. So let's go back down to our BMS. Remember we have all these leads on the bottom of it. Our black is going to be our negative that we're going to put on first. Our red is going to be our positive that we're going to put on last. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back up to this, this guy here. Our first cell. We're going to take the black which is negative, we're going to put it on there. Now, I'm temporarily going to put on this nut, just temporarily, because we am, are going to, when we're done, we're going to put these on there, and these have to go on first, but I'm going to do these first. So then we're going to take our first wire, wire number one, the white wire on this BMS. Some BMSs, they're all the same color on this BMS, the last, only the last one is red. The rest of them are white. These are all positive. We're going to go in that same cell, that first cell. And slip it on like that. I'm not tightening these down yet. I'm just hand tightening them. So now we're going to take number two. Number two. Where does number two go? Bam. Positive of the next cell. We're just going to continue that. We're going to go on all of the positives until we get to the end here. These bolts and these wires and these batteries are old, so nothing's going on smoothly. So we grab our next wire. Number three. Number three is going to go on the next positive. 
next cell over. You see this is very, very simple. You just gotta do it slowly and make sure you don't get the wires mixed up. And we're only putting them on the positive after we do our first negative. Everything else is positive. Just go slowly. So it's a good idea to label them. Number five, here we go. Now a lot of people when they're done, they'll cut these wires to make them a little neater. I don't cut mine because I tend to take these things apart because I like to just play with them. But if you're building this for real, you can actually cut all these or you can put them all together so they're nice and neat, however you want to do it. So we got number six. Number six, next one over here. So here we got number seven. Look at that. We're almost done. And our final wire, number eight, goes here. And number eight is going to be our new positive. So we have wired it up. Now we still got to put all the bolts on all the other ends here. And we're going to take all these wires and bring them this way. So it'll be a little bit neater. But those are all your leads. That's all your balance leads hooked up. Now this is your sensor for your temperature. When we're done, I'm going to tape this here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go back through. I'm going to put all these nuts on all the bolts. And these can be tightened down if you'd like. Because nothing else will come there. All right, I'm going to stop the camera because this is kind of boring. But you get what I'm doing. I'm just going to take these nuts, put them on the bolts, tighten everything down. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, but it's going to take me about 10 minutes to do, and it's just kind of boring to watch. All right, my friends, we have to pause and talk about a rookie mistake that I made that I just caught. I'm sure some of you more advanced people that are watching this probably caught it as well. <sighs> you do not want to have your wiring harness attached to your BMS before you wire up everything. So I was showing you how I was wiring it. This needs to be detached from your BMS. And then what you're going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to test the wires and I'm going to show you how to do that. And then once everything's good, then you can attach your BMS. All right. It's hard to do. It's hard to film because I only have two hands. So I, I want to show you because it makes more sense when you can actually see it. So you can see these little things. You can see there's a little bit of metal there. So you take your black, you touch it to your black. And hopefully you can see my meter here. I touch it to that first one, it's 3.5. Second one, it's just hard to do. Second one, see it's 7. Next one's 10. 13, 14. You got to watch the one that is blank. 17. See that one's blank, don't worry about that. Actually two are blank. Um, I'm going to turn it because now we're over... So see there we're at 21, we're at 24, and we're at 28.4. So that means that the wiring harness is correct. So now that we know our wiring harness is good, we can go ahead and attach it. And we can do the final step, which is to take the B side and to attach it to our battery. It's going to be the same one that the black is on, because this is our negative. You want to put these big wires on first. So now we will just tighten this down. Make sure you don't over torque these. Follow the torquing instruction. Follow the instructions on the battery as far as torquing force. Don't over torque these. So our final step will be to attach our positive wire out. So I just have a short piece of red. Again, thicker wires go on the bottom. We're going to tighten this down and then we'll test it to make sure we have a functioning battery. So now for the test. We've got our meter. We will see if we have voltage going through. 
and look at that 28.4 so we're done so now you can put this in your in a box you can put it in your rig you can put this in your off-grid solar setup you can do whatever you want to do you could get a couple more of these and you could put these in parallel so you have a huge battery bank but that's it it's very simple to do but it's just not worth doing anymore again unless you're like me and you just like to have fun and you have a ton of these batteries lying around and you have a ton of wire and a ton of everything uh, which i do but for a normal person just buy a 48 volt battery all right if anyone has any questions comments please leave it below as always like comment share subscribe thanks for watching i've enjoyed this one i've had a little bit of fun with it as you can probably tell um that's it um i'll talk to everyone soon